everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about some books that I have read recently. So I apologize for the background and the echo. I am moving, if you guys didn't know, and all of my books are already packed. So I don't really have much else to do for a background, so this is gonna have to do. And because there aren't really any books in here, it's a lot more echoey. And I also can only find one of the umbrellas for my umbrella lights. So we are just dealing with what we have here. And I have a couple of recent reads videos to film today because I have read a lot recently and I just, you know, I'm making do. But we also are losing daylight. So I'm hoping I will be able to get both of them done before the sun sets. But anyways, I have five books to talk about today that I have read recently and they're actually all books that I really enjoyed. I have a one here that I think is a new favorite of mine but they are ones that definitely blew me away and one of them is a graphic novel that's why I only showed you four in the beginning. So these are the first four books that I will be talking about but I will have timestamps in the description box down below if you wanted to hear about any particular book here and the other book is Heartstopper Volume 4 but I'm going to be giving like a mini review and thoughts and I will be keeping it spoiler free so don't worry if you haven't read these yet. But without further ado, let's just get into it. So starting off, I read Wings of Ebony by JL. This is one I was really excited for because it is an urban fantasy and it's about like demigods. So it follows this girl and she is a Houston teen and she actually ends up discovering that she is descendant from gods and she has to like make this decision that is going to impact both of her worlds. So it's a very interesting urban fantasy because I felt like it was a really unique debut. Like the world of it was very different than what I was expecting. The main character Rue was a really great character to follow. She was super determined and would do absolutely anything to protect her sister and I loved seeing that sisterly bond in the story. It wasn't something I was expecting but it was really refreshing to read it though. Rue is also just very headstrong and she's an easy character to root for. I did have a couple of issues with this book, however. So you were really like thrust right into the story and it took me a while to find my footing. I found that the world building could have been a little bit stronger. I found it kind of hard to picture the two worlds and like, how they interacted and how it exactly worked. I think the fact that you're really thrown right into the story kind of contributed to the confusion of that. So it did seem really interesting, but I felt like I never quite got the grasp on it that I would have liked to. Now, I did enjoy how racism and white supremacy were integrated into this fantasy setting, and I thought they were very well integrated, like that and colonialism, that was also a topic in here. So it did a great job of bringing these really prevalent issues into a fantasy setting and making them kind of more easily digestible. It was very interesting in that way. I wasn't really expecting what I ended up getting from this book, but not in a bad way necessarily. I just felt like gods were going to be different and I felt like they were going to be more prevalent in the story. But what it really is, is a very unique mix of contemporary and fantasy. It reads very much like a contemporary with some fantasy thrown in there. And like, it's not even like it's just a touch of fantasy like the fantasy is pretty fantastical like it is pretty high fantasy but the overall story reads mostly like it's a contemporary story. You are kind of thrown in between these two worlds frequently and I felt like there were some kind of like plot issues and suspension of disbelief issues that I had with that but I liked that mix there where you got to see both worlds and how Rue interacted in each of them. That being said I think there were times where things kind of were a little bit too nice. Like they worked out, things worked out very easily and more so than I was expecting. Like there are times where Rue is captured and she escapes like way more easily than I would really be expecting and that is kind of a minor detail but things worked out and I felt like sometimes there just wasn't enough fighting for that. But overall this was a really strong debut. It provided a great character that I just couldn't help but root for. I enjoyed her a lot and I'm looking forward to seeing what is to come in sequels, maybe more of the 
gods side of the story. I liked how it blended contemporary and fantasy and I think this author is super talented and this is definitely a unique read. Next up I read Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. So this is the latest book by Morgan Matson, who is one of my favorite authors and favorite contemporary authors and I was so excited to get my hands on this. I actually did a live show with a couple of friends and with Morgan Matson, so I'll have that link down below for you guys. It was a lot of fun but this story is set in New York and it's these two best friends. They go to New York and they don't have like anyone else with them. It's their first time there by themselves and then pretty much everything that can go wrong ends up going wrong. Like they lose their phones in the beginning, there's family drama, there's just a little bit of everything. So this is very much like Save the Date and Save the Date is one of my least favorite of her books but that being said like I did still really enjoy it but it's just because like Save the Date cut my anxiety like ooh <laughs> but I did enjoy this one a little bit more and I think partially that might be because of the escapism this one provided. This is very much set in New York. Like it transports you to New York City. You feel like you were right there alongside these characters in Times Square like just exploring and it is so lovely to be brought there. I miss being in New York City so I had a blast with the setting. It was very well written. Stevie and Kat are the main characters in this book and their friendship has a very interesting dynamic and they're kind of going through like some struggles and individually they have really great character arcs. I found Stevie to be really relatable for me as a character and Kat can be a little bit frustrating at times but I didn't mind it. Like I liked that the focus was mostly on their friendship. That's kind of the main relationship that I cared about. There's a little bit of romance going on in here but mostly I really enjoyed reading about that platonic relationship. Now there's also a kind of weird side plot with the character of Terry and that was definitely interesting. I'm not really sure how I felt about it. Like I felt like it kind of provided some comic relief. It definitely is like a suspension of disbelief situation but I wasn't expecting it and I think that's why I was kind of like oh this is fun but I do get how it kind of like it I don't know. I. I kind of questioned its purpose at times because it didn't seem to really fit in the story and the book would have been, in my opinion, pretty much the same without it, but it was a fun little addition. This also really focuses on self-discovery and Kat and Stevie have like this idea for their future and it's kind of like not really meshing between the two of them. Like Broadway is a main focus, like acting, that is definitely a main focus in here and I, I like Broadway but I'm not like super into it so I think maybe if you're really into Broadway Broadway, you would probably love this one. Like I really enjoyed it but it's not my favorite by her but I did still like really like it. I would say it's kind of in the middle. This book did a great job of capturing the difficulties of like that transformative period at the end of high school and how friendships and like fare through that and how it's really a tumultuous time to be trying to hang on to these relationships that you think will last forever and you have like an idea for the future and things aren't always going that way and I think that all of the struggles that come along with that were present in this novel and were dealt with very well. Obviously the characters like there's pretty much everything that can go wrong is going wrong so they're facing a lot of obstacles but I felt like all of the obstacles led to growth for each of the characters and it was like I don't I don't really want to say anything about this because I feel like it could be like kind of, it's not really spoilery, but a lot of their time is spent apart, which was interesting, but I still felt like it was a story about the two of them together, if that makes sense. Like this was really great because it managed to be light and fluffy and fun, but also have a hard hitting aspect to it, which is one of the things that I love that Morgan Matson does. So there is also some continuation, some cameos in this book from other characters that I know a lot of people are kind of shook by. Uh, and yeah, I, I will say, I'm also kind of shook by it. Like, I don't know how I feel about it, but it does exist. So this was a great like new Morgan Matson book. I would say maybe read this in like the fall because it's actually set in November. So there is like a little bit of like winter, cold, Christmassy, not really Christmassy, but that vibe to it. So I think that would be a great time to read it, but also really just whenever. Following that, I read a book that like completely blew me out of the water. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did, but oh my goodness, like it was so dang good. And that is Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q. Sutanto. So this, I like, I almost didn't pre-order this, but I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. Because it's one of those books that like, 
shouldn't work but it does like the synopsis just sounds really weird and I wasn't exactly sure what to make of it but I'm so glad I took a chance on it because it was so freaking great. I actually listened to the audiobook for this one while I was packing and I feel like I was like five minutes in maybe and I already knew I was gonna love this. The writing, the voices, everything about it was absolutely like flawless. This follows the main character Madeline and she is with her aunties. She has all of her aunties with her. There are four of them. I mean there's actually three and then her mother technically but they own this wedding business and Madeline works as a photographer for the business. Like they do everything. They do the cakes and everything and in the beginning like literally I'm just gonna read the back of this to get you to have an idea of why I was confused by this. So what happens when you mix one accidental murder with 2,000 wedding guests and then toss in a possible curse on three generations of an immigrant Chinese Indonesian family. You get four meddling Asian aunties coming to the rescue. That's literally what the story is. Like Madeline accidentally murders this guy and they are trying to like keep this a secret. They're trying to hide the body. They're trying to like and all the while there's this romance plot line going on. There's a second chance romance and I was not expecting a second chance romance but that is one of my favorite tropes and oh my goodness the chemistry. It was it was just fantastic okay. Like this book had everything that I want from a romance. It had amazing family dynamics. It had a great main character and it had such an adorable relationship. Like it was just beautiful. This book is honestly just filled with love but it was also hilarious. Like there were many times when I was laughing out loud and it was just such a fun and unexpected read and I need to read more from this author. Like I don't know if there's going to be more in this series but I definitely need to read more because her writing was fantastic and I thought that the audiobook was really well narrated, like the narrator was perfect for it. So everything about this I had a fabulous experience with and I cannot recommend this enough. It was so dang good. So next I actually ended up picking up a fantasy and that is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. So this is the latest book by Trisha Levenseller and I have read Daughter of the Pirate King and what is the other one that I've read? Warrior of the Wild and then she has as Shades of Darkness. I can never remember. The Darkness Between Us I think is what it's called actually but I haven't read that one yet but this one I had pre-ordered and I'm so glad that I did because once again I had a blast with this one. It is like the fastest fantasy I think I've ever read. So it follows a blacksmith who has social anxiety and she accepts this commission for the sword that ends up being like the most dangerous weapon that she's ever produced. So she ends up going on the run with her sister with this sword to keep it out of the wrong hands and it was just it was really great like like I said a super fast read but that's not the only thing there was such a great sister relationship in here I wasn't expecting so much like I knew that there was a sister in here obviously but it's just mentioned in like passing in the synopsis but she actually is really prevalent like that sister relationship is a main focal point of the story so I was really pleasantly surprised when I found that out I also thought the concept of having the main character be a blacksmith was really interesting and different and I loved like hearing about her smithing. I don't know if that's actually a verb but I'm making it one and also as a character I found her very relatable for me so her anxiety is definitely very prevalent throughout the story and personally my anxiety isn't specific to social situations but her experiences and a lot of her feelings and the description of that were still something that I was really able to relate to. I thought it was fantastic anxiety rep in a fantasy book. I think this read so quickly and was such a fast paced read because there was no moment where I felt like it was dragging. There was no moment where I felt like this isn't really important, like it, why, are, why am I reading about this? I felt like everything was a puzzle piece to the story that made sense and that's why it just was like such a quick fast paced and immersive story. There also is a really sweet romance in here. It's kind of a slow burn enemies to lovers sort of deal and I really enjoyed that. Like I loved seeing these characters and just everything about 
of them was definitely great. So overall, I had a lot of fun with this one. It was action-packed and intriguing, and I know that I'm pretty sure it's going to be a duology. I know for sure there is a second book, so I will definitely be picking that one up. And I also want to pick up her other book that I haven't read yet now, because I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. And after reading this, I'm like, really, why haven't I picked it up yet? Okay, and the final book that I have to talk about for this recent reads video is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. So this is a graphic novel and it's actually like a comic that is released. It's a web series. I don't read the web series. I wait for the volumes to come out, but this is the latest volume. So I'm not going to be like going into spoilers for it, but it is a male male romance and it is so sweet. Like I love these characters. If you want something heartwarming with like an amazing friend group and just an adorable romance, this graphic novel series is so fantastic. But this latest one really I think was the hardest to read. This one dealt with the most serious topics. It talks about eating disorders a lot and depression and self-harm and it was really hard to see the characters dealing with that but I felt like it was dealt with in a very healthy way and like their relationship was kind of going toward unhealthy territory and it veered away from that and by that I mean like they were becoming like very reliant on each other for things that like really they can't help each other with. So I enjoyed that that problem was solved and it was done so in a really healthy way. I think these are books that you can like learn a lot about a healthy relationship from and it was still as much as it was a difficult and heavy and emotional installment it also was heartwarming at the same time and kind of like what you expect from the series if you have read any of them before. They are just so sweet and this one was no exception to that. I would still say that volume three is my favorite but I think that the stories or not the stories but the topics that were dealt with in this one you knew they were going to come up eventually and I was glad that they did and that they have been started to like they've started to deal with them now so I'm looking forward to the next volume which I'm pretty sure is the last volume which is very sad but I am looking forward to it nonetheless. Okay, so those are all of the five books that I have read the most recently. Like I said, I have five more to talk about and I'm literally gonna film right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have read in any of these, please let me know your thoughts on them because I would love to know. Like I loved all of these. So if you haven't read any of them, then you really should. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one soon. Bye.